The response to part one of the Be A Good Leader series was absolutely overwhelming, with tons of people commenting that they loved seeing examples of people doing good leadership right. So today we're highlighting another person who's out there doing awesome stuff, and that person is Brandon Sanderson. If you aren't familiar with Brandon, he is perhaps the most prolific fantasy author of our time, and recently received an extra dose of publicity for having the most successful Kickstarter ever, raising nearly $42 million. One of the big reasons for Brandon's success is that he is much more than just a phenomenal author. He's also a master at building a community and letting his authentic self be seen, which very quickly turns people into super fans. His YouTube channel and podcasts show him as a relatable, quirky dude, not some distant celebrity. The other thing that sets Brandon apart from other authors is he isn't just a guy who writes books. He's also the CEO of Dragonsteel Entertainment, which employs over 50 people, has its own fulfillment warehouse, publishes some of Brandon's books, does video and other media, and runs its own fan convention. And that is where we get to see Brando Sando exhibiting some fantastic attributes of leadership. Some of the things he does are just that same being a fun, quirky dude, just as a CEO. Like, after their absurdly successful Kickstarter, Brandon and his team all gathered in a room and went through and backed every other publishing Kickstarter on the platform. 316 projects in total. That's just cool. For an even quirkier example, his house is just kind of a normal suburban house in Utah. Except he also bought the empty lot next to it to build an underground supervillain lair that has a mezzanine and a massive theater built into it, as well as a saltwater aquarium because he couldn't get, and I quote, a tank with sharks that have frickin' laser beams on their heads. I have one simple request, and that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Brandon is a big movie buff, so the theater is kind of a personal dream for him, and he reserves it for himself and his family on Wednesdays. But he leaves the other days available for members of his staff to reserve it to share with their family and friends. And sure, the option to reserve your boss's underground supervillain lair to watch movies with your friends is kind of a fun perk. But fun perks aren't really new. We've probably all heard about the big tech companies like Google and Facebook that have foosball and ping pong tables and slides and gyms and food courts and every amenity that you could possibly think of. But just because they have all this stuff doesn't actually make them good places to work. But Brandon does something else that far overshadows the movie nights and work-sponsored Magic the Gathering tournaments. Dragonsteel has a lot of different types of employees, but regardless of what your job is, if you work there full-time, there is a minimum threshold for pay. Dragonsteel Entertainment is based in Salt Lake City, so Brandon looked up the average cost of living for a family of four in Salt Lake City, and then every employee makes at least that amount so that you can theoretically support your family on a single income. I'll let Brandon explain his reasoning using his own words. I believe strongly that by being a business owner, my job is to try to provide the best job possible. My job is not to maximize profits. My job is to provide a good working environment. That's, that's what I think a boss's job should be. Uh, and I think we've lost that. I believe in kind of the old school uh, mentality that my employees, I'm asking them for their lives. And so I should in return express my values to them. And it's so easy to be a CEO and not and, and ha say, oh, I believe in these values, but then not do anything about it. And I think that that's um, a little bit of moral corruption entering our society. It's an incredibly sad commentary on our work culture that that is a big deal, 
But it kind of is. Even if many other companies and positions pay similar salaries, they usually do so with different motivations. Pay is calculated based on the labor market and how easy or difficult it is to find employees with the right skills and qualifications, generally with the intention of paying as little as you can while still getting the skills that you need. Instead of looking at hiring as an equation where you try to get as much output from a person for as little input as possible, Brandon's method is based on the idea of making sure that employees can have a good life outside of work, which means reasonable hours and a living wage. Now I know the term living wage is used in a lot of different contexts and often super incorrectly. Some will say, I deserve a living wage, and what they mean is, I deserve to get paid enough that I can do whatever I want. And obviously that's not what it is. But then other people will say, hey, I'm paying you a living wage as long as you eat ramen for every meal and have a studio apartment with three roommates, you're living just fine. And that's not what it is either. Brandon actually makes sure that employees are getting paid a living wage based on the cost of living for their area, which is way better than other methods because it accounts for things like inflation and cost of living adjustments based on their region. When we talk about personal ethics, this is the kind of stuff we're talking about. Nobody is making Brandon do this. He pays well above the legally mandated minimum wage and he does so because of a personal moral code that he has developed that determines what he considers right and wrong, not what the law says that he has to do, and not what he's seen other CEOs or managers do. It doesn't matter whether it's culturally or legally acceptable, it matters whether he can feel good about how he's acting. And pretty much everyone loves him because of it. Including me! So let me propose a revolutionary and absolutely earth-shattering concept in business leadership. If you want to earn the respect and loyalty of your employees, try treating them with respect and loyalty. Maybe start by paying them enough to live? Speaking of authors and ethics, did you know that I have written a book on ethical leadership? I promise it isn't a super dry, boring business book. It's full of exciting stories about bull riding and skydiving and coaching middle school basketball. If you like these videos, you'll probably like the book. You can buy it a lot of different places, but since I've made a whole video about how Amazon is basically a dystopian supervillain, I would prefer you buy it from not Amazon. Try Barnes & Noble. I'll put a link up here in the floaty corner thing, and also in the description. Thanks for enduring my self-promotion. Now get out there, make the world a better place. Instead of an end screen, have some bloopers. Not some distant celebrity. I said celebrity weird. Time, ah, dang it. Brandon is a big movie buff, so he... The theater is kind of a uh, personal dream. Why can't I say that word? Part one of the Be a Good Leader Spear, 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 Spear. <laughs> <laughs>